Hey guys, today we're going to talk about fur. We're going to talk about fur, we're going to paint fur, we're going to market some fur, do all kinds of fur. Hey, this is a subscriber requested video. I love it. When I was first getting started, I was like, okay, so what do I teach first? What, which lessons should I tackle first? What videos should I produce? But now at this point, you're all like, I want to learn this and I want to learn that. And that works for me because I don't have to think about that. I'd be like, oh, a bunch of people want this, so I'm going to do this now. All right, so today we're going to talk about fur. I'm going to break down a few of my principles for rendering most furs, and then I'm going to demo a few techniques. I'm not going to render one complete garment because there's too many techniques to cover, too many um, styles of fur out there. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different techniques, and if you have any questions or you want me to get more specific on certain things, you can drop me a comment and I'll follow up with a future video. All right, let's start from the beginning. When you're first designing fur, you're gonna draw your basic shapes and silhouettes, right? Now, when you draw fur, draw it big. Nobody wears fur to look skinny. You know, some people, they're like, oh, you know, my legs are gonna look so skinny compared to this ridiculously thick fur. Yeah, okay, you can think of it like that if you want, but the whole point is the fur is gonna be thick. Look at this. Nice, thick, red dyed chinchilla, you know, big, fluffy, curly shearling, big coat, thick cape, giant fur trim around her head. You know, look at these. You notice how with this like really thin fur trim, the jacket just looks a little bit less luxurious than this giant fur trim fat fur collar that spans the entire height of her neck. Big, giant coat hitting mid-thigh, very thick and plush. Looks wonderful. So draw big shapes. Number two, fur is denser in the center and then it spreads out, just like hair. You know, hair I've said this a million times in hair tutorials, hair is denser closest to the body, to the head, and then it spreads out. So you see places like here, where in here it's completely opaque and filled in with fur. And then as things get spread out, you see gaps, and so it's almost like a light halo. More so here, because the individual strands are pulled apart even more. Here you also see a halo of lighter color because there's more gaps in between individual hairs. And you see here in this long shaggy collar where you see all these gaps. And so your color is gonna be super dense in the middle, no gaps, and then the edges will have gaps. And so you can paint them lighter or not even paint them at all and fill them in with color pencil or other media later. Number three, render in the direction the hair is going, growing, and blowing, just like hair. So in this case, you can tell in this photo shoot that there was a fan and the hairs are going in this direction and it's blowing in this direction. And you're gonna render all those individual curly hairs in that direction. This one, you can see they're coming out from a center point. Out, 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 out. Number four, you're always going to shadow and highlight according to the texture. When, if you look at videos like my, my shiny fabrics tutorial, all of my shadow and highlight shapes were really clean and smooth and round because I wanted to emphasize the slick surface of these shiny fabrics. If you look at my quilted uh, fabrics tutorial where I did some suede things, I buffed out some of the highlights and shadows using a color pencil because I wanted that soft texture for those highlights and shadows compared to the slickness of the shiny fabrics. With fur, you're going to create shadows and highlights that reflect the texture of individual furs. Like this one is kind of a long hair and so your shadows are going to pick up that same texture. In here, all these shadows in here are retain that 
curly shape and so do the highlights. And so you can't just take a soft furry vest like this and take your white and just screech it across. It ruins the effect of the entire illustration. Number five, you're always going to have a broken line silhouette. What I mean by that is, you know, when you're working on a collar like this, if you want to draw it, you know, you're not going to draw this shape. Okay? Your collar is going to end up with a broken line along the edges to show the texture of the fur. So everything is going back to the texture, the furry texture. That's the number one thing, right? Okay, so now that we've got that done, I'm going to show you a few things. Even if I'm working with marker, I like to use a rough cold press watercolor paper because the texture of the paper helps me render furry, fuzzy textures. If I'm working on marker paper, I will actually put down a sheet of the rough paper underneath so that I can use the texture of the cold press paper uh, through this thin marker paper. So I drew the coat, really big, fluffy shape to emphasize the thickness of the fur. And you're going to draw it really lightly because later on you're going to put in the broken line silhouette on top and you don't want a thick outline shape to fight that later on. Rendering in the direction the hair is going, fill this in. Now, I do prefer brush tips for fur, much like I prefer brush tips for hair. And then I'm going to add some shadows. I'm going to shadow with a dry media to emphasize the texture. So I'm going to say that's my light source. I'm going to use the texture of the paper to help me create textures in the fur. This is how I would treat a short hair fur. Let's pretend that this section is the front section is long hair. And so I would shadow using that texture. So I'm kind of giving a texture overall while emphasizing the shadow area. And you see the two different textures going on there. If you can see a highlight in your first swatch, then go ahead and render it. Uh, some furs are just not that shiny. So if I had highlights sitting, again, I would follow the texture of the fur. I'm using a white charcoal pencil right now. And I really like it because you can smudge it. You can use a white color pencil. You can use a white charcoal pencil. Don't use them together because the binder in these, they fight with each other. So if you try to put color pencil on top of charcoal pencil or vice versa, they fight, they get streaky. It's like a horrible mess. So just pick one or the other. And then at this point, I could take a fat mechanical pencil or color pencil, a darker one, and give me that broken line silhouette that reflects the fur shape and texture and hair length. And I want to intersperse some random And then this one, remember, long, that different kind 
And you can do this exact same thing with paint. Just make sure that your paint dries before you put any kind of dry media on top. Otherwise, you'll just get a muddy mess. One of my favorite ways to render a beautiful, soft looking fur is to use really dry gouache with a really dry pencil and I clearly need a new burnt umber. I'm going to take my very stiff bristled oil brush. I'm going to not add any water. I'm going to take my black wash, not add any water, and just tap the end of my very bristly brush. And you know, you can create all kinds of textures of furs using this dry brush technique. You can get a smaller bristle brush to get a little bit more exact. It's actually on my shopping list right now because apparently I need to go to the store and get burnt umber and just create these gorgeous soft textures with your dry brushes. I also like using wet on wet technique to create bleedy effects. Wet on wet technique is basically putting wet things on other wet things. That's how I created this beautiful uh, uh, silver stole where you have that thick black core running through the fur. For this, you're going to need dry black wash on a skinny dry brush. And then you're going to need a really diluted wash that's in the gray color that you want. You're going to lightly draw in the shape of the stole that you want. You're going to have, this is my size 12 round and this is my size four. So you're going to have your skinny black brush filled with dry black potent gouache. You're gonna have your fat brush filled with diluted gouache. You're going to fill this in. You're gonna take your dry brush and Anytime you wanna scoop up any excess paint, what you just need to do is squeeze all the paint and water out of your brush and just tap it to your paper. Water wants to go where there isn't water and so it'll go straight up into your brush. And now you have this soft, fuzzy, dark core in the center of your silver stole. If you want this kind of broad stripe thing going on, you know, like this little chinchilla jacket here. What I did was I drew the pieces and drew all the striped pieces. I painted in the gray. And then just like I did for quilting pieces, I shadowed each shape, each individual shape. And then I took this flat shader, you know, very skinny, very flat. And I took this dry brush and I put it in my dry black wash. If you want it super potent and black like this, you have to wait for the bottom layer to dry. And then you get that rich, black, hairy, soft edge. And that's how you do a chinchilla. Anytime you do a trim, just a fur trim, the only special thing that you have to keep in mind is 
figure out the direction that your trim is going to go and keep it that way the entire time. Like this one, I was demonstrating a bunch of different directions. This one, the fur is going this way, and so I'm keeping my fur hairs going in this direction the entire time. In this one, the fur was going out, and so it's going in this direction the entire time. Same here, this one is going in this direction. This one is going outward. This one is just all swooping down. So again, use your brush strokes, whether with paint or with marker, and render in the direction you want the fur to go to design the texture. Let's recap. Number one, draw your shapes big. Look at your first swatch. Is it super fluffy or is it a little bit on the thin side? Even if it's a little bit on the thin side, even your thinnest furs are going to be thicker than your uh, most coat fabrics. And so you're going to have to draw big shapes and your drapes cannot be skinny and scrunchy. Like if you draw an elbow in a silk, you're going to see all these beautiful scrunchy things happening as the sleeve bends, right? Not with fur. Fur is bulky. And so you're going to see like maybe one fold and it's going to come around like that. You're going to draw it lightly because you're going to put the broken line silhouette on top later. So you're going to draw all your shapes big and light. Number two, fur is denser in the middle because there's just more hairs there and then things get spread out. And so you're going to have kind of a light halo around the edges instead. And you can achieve this with wet on wet technique, dry brush technique, or like any technique. Just make sure that it's you start to lighten up as you get to the edges of your drawing. Number three, render in the direction the fur grows, whether it's a trim or an all over. The fur always has a direction because, you know, hair follicles come at an angle. And so your fur is growing at an angle and most fake fur is created to mimic real fur. And so that's going to have a direction. Fake fur is considered a napped fabric, so it is going to have a direction. You need to render in that direction for it to look realistic. On that note, number four, highlights and shadows must reflect the texture, the direction, and the length of your individual furs. And number five, create a broken line silhouette on the top, even if it you have a really short hair fur and it's really subtle, it will emphasize the texture of everything, you know, by showing it in the silhouette as well. Bonus tips, I like to use cold pressed watercolor paper with a rough texture when I'm painting so that the texture is gonna really help me emphasize the fur texture. And when I'm using marker paper, I like to lay it down on top of rough texture paper so that I can get the rub off. And uh, I like using brush tips because I can get the nice little tapers going on. And charcoal pencil is an awesome tool for creating soft highlights, but do not mix those with color pencil. They will fight each other and make a mess of your paper. Don't forget to always apply dry media after all your paint is dry. Otherwise, yeah, just total disaster waiting to happen, right? I think that's everything. As usual, drop me all the questions. Um, if you have questions on a specific kind of fur, drop me a link to the picture so that you don't have to try to describe it in crazy paragraph. That's it. Yeah. Go practice. Go go paint. If you went and got paints, have fun with it. Go paint, practice, come back, ask me questions. You know, I might have some answers. All right. And uh, I'll see you next time.